Ephesians 6 and 10 says, now some of you all should have already went to your Bibles and got it. It's Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, right over in there. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But against principalities. Against powers. Against the rulers of darkness of this world. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. 17th and final verse. And take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Turn over there to 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, and the 4th and the 5th verse. 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, the 4th and the 5th verse. Now, don't look at 2 Chronicles. That's in the Old Testament. This is in the New Testament. This is Corinthians. Amen. Just, just, just flip on back. Amen. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Fifth and final verse. Casting down imaginations. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And I, I had one more scripture and I'm going to go to it because I, I might as well just go on to it. It's, it's there. So it's just looking at me and I was saying, read me too. I said, I might as well go to it. Acts 1 and 8. Acts 1 and 8. On over there, Acts 1 and 8. After John is asked, Acts 1 and 8. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, that's at home, and all Judea, that's the neighboring country, and in Samaria, which is just a little bit farther, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Close the book. My subject is the armor of God. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. The subject is the armor of God. Uh, my subtopic is armed. <laughs> That's my subtopic, armed. Now, now, armor by definition is weapons of war or self defense figurative of spiritual resources 
Webster defined it as covering worn to protect the body against weapons. That's the armor. And to be armed is simply is to be provided with arms or weapons. Strongholds is a place or means of protection or refuge. Actually, it's Satan's power. Webster defined it as a place having strong defenses. Fortified place. A fortified place is to strengthen against attack. We as Christians are on the battlefield. Fighting in a war. But it's sad to say that some of us have not learned how to fight. Nor do we know who we are fighting. Uh, fighting in a battle or war requires certain skills and equipment. Some of us learn how to fight in the world. It's called street fighting. How many of y'all know about that? Yeah. And that fight was won <laughs> by whatever means that would, you could win the fight. And some of us would punch, scratch, uh -huh. kick, cut. Shoot, pull hair, some tore the clothes off of folks, threw bricks, hit in the head with a bottle, pick up a chair. Some of us even double team folks. Some of us ganged up on folks. We just did whatever it took to win the battle. And most of the time, uh, some of us were too cowards. So we always had somebody or something with us at all times. Oh yeah, some folks, you find them, they, they talk big in the crowd. <laughs> they just can on in the crowd. But you catch them by themselves. They quiet as a church spouse. <laughs> they won't say nothing to you because they, they're coward because they have to have somebody around them to give them the option. And sometimes they're coward enough to carry a gun. Because they don't know how to fight. Folks nowadays don't know how to fight. That's why they're shooting folks. They don't know how to, you know, when I was growing up in my childhood, we fought fair. We put down all of that mess and we duped it out. And made the best man won. Hey, Amen. We, we get out there, brother. <laughs> hey, Amen. I can remember, I used to run home every day. This boy kept messing with me. I'd run home. My uncle said, go back. One day he got tired of me coming in and talking about it. He said, I'm taking you back down there. He dragged me. I said, I thought he should have went and double team. Me and him were going to double team the guy. That's what I thought. I said, oh yeah, I got some help now. And he threw me in there with him and said, fight. I said, Lord Jesus. But I came up, I was duking. I mean, I... Ah, uh, boy, uh, me and that, me and that fella, we had a round. And do you not know I whooped him? Amen. But, but, but we became the best of friends. Amen. If we would fight like we did street fighting years ago, most of the time, those that we're fighting, we'll end up being friends with them. But we don't get that opportunity now because street fighting is dirty fighting. Amen. And, it, and it, it really don't require much skill. You don't take much skill to fight in the streets. It just takes endurance. And who can punch the hardest? And because I, you get through hit, hit, hit so many times, you, brother, you ready to run on off from there. Amen. Or, or once they pull your wig, well, Lord, help me, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, 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 and women don't fight fair. I'm telling you, they... Women love to tear everything off of each other. They will strip each other, and, and I seen one woman had a woman head on the on the concrete just beat. I said, Lord Jesus, she gonna bust that woman's head off. Now, brothers, we don't do stuff like that. But women, they just treacherous when they fight. Mm-hmm. But but let's look at fighting in a war that requires both skill through training. And armor or equipment of protection. 
Now, now, when you get trained, you go to boot camp in a real army. You learn how to fight. You learn the tactics of fighting. You learn the different techniques of how to fight the enemy. You actually learn who the enemy is. They, if we're fighting the Germans, and back in World War One and Two, they didn't send us to fight uh, somebody else. They, they trained us how to fight Germans because they strategically said this is the way you can fight Germans by doing X, Y, Z. They didn't say, well, I'll tell you what you do. You, 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 you fight Germans like you fight Japanese. No, 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 no. Two different groups of people. They trained you who the enemy was. And during that time, the enemy was the Germans. With that madman, y'all know who he is. I, I, I'm just talking history. That madman that was over there by the name of Hitler. Being used by the devil. He, he had lost his mind. Over there got folks fighting over nothing. But at least when we went into war, we knew who we were fighting. Now listen at this. The trouble with us today is that we don't know the enemy. So we start fighting the wrong people and start killing off those that are on our side. Oh Lord, help me Jesus. See, some of us don't know the enemy. We don't even know how the enemy look. We think the enemy look like you, so we start fighting you. But Paul wrote it very plainly to the church of Ephesus. He said, he said, listen, 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 listen. We don't fight against flesh and blood. Y'all stop fighting one another. See, the devil didn't want me to preach this message, but I'm preaching today. I knew there was a reason why all this mix-up and mixture was going on. I said, that's, that's why I was dancing in the spirit. Because I knew that if I got a chance to get behind this sacred desk, I was going to knock him out. Because he didn't want me to preach it. So, so most of us don't know who the enemy is. We start fighting one another. Talking about one another. Tearing down one another. Ridiculing one another. Trying to beat up on one another. Trying to say, I'm bigger than you and all of that mess. But you got to know who the enemy is. Hence, our texts start to explain how we are to fight. And with what we are to fight with. Paul stated, finally, my brethren, put on the whole armor of God. Now, if he tells us to put on the whole armor, it would make sense that if you don't have it, then there's something lacking. And I would say that if you don't have on the right armor, there's no sense in going out to battle. Some of us going out, well, going out to battle, and we don't have all that it takes to fight. You know there are certain qualifications in the armor that, that the army that they don't they won't even take you. They won't take flat-footed folks. You know that, don't you? Oh, y'all didn't know that. They won't take bow-legged folks either. Oh Lord, help me, Jesus. Not needed sleuth. Well, Jesus, help me, Lord. That right. All of that they won't take. But oh, then God's army. God will teach you how. If you're bow-legged, not needed, slew footed, pigeon toed, all of that, God say, I'll use you to fight against the enemy. Well, you said, Brother Preacher, well, what is the arm of God? I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked. First of all, we have to take the belt, which is girded about our loins with truth. Satan fights us with lies. Sometimes uh, he lies so well until it sounds like the truth. And, 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 and we have God's truth which can defeat Satan's lies. You know the devil done lied to you before. And some of us, because we don't have the belt and don't have the truth, we've been saying amen to the devil and no to God.